What is up everyone and we are back with another guide about Fantasy Star Online 2. Today we are talking about the Yukold series and why I rank them a must have and they are the best weapon in the game for all characters. This series is a 14 star series and is considered an upgrade from the Fortnite's 13 star series. And we all know that 15 star is the absolute max rarity but these still are considered endgame because they are equipable on all classes. What that means is that every single one of your alt characters can equip this weapon with the minimum requirement of 460 dex. So the reason why they are endgame for your alt characters is because it's the strongest and cheapest weapon for your alt characters. They also have a potential that heals you for 50 health per damage instance if the enemy is weak to the elements attached to it. Each potential is different per weapon type and they come with two elements attached. On top of that, you can just change your base elemental type to a third element in order to heal from three elements. When you have multiple characters for whatever reason you want, you want them to be the best geared for the cheapest price and this series fits the bill. For example, I have one main character and about 11 alternate characters. If I spend 5 million Masetta per character, that's 55 million Masetta and that's quite a lot of Masetta. When you're gearing your alt characters, units are extremely inexpensive, around 500k for base units and the main cost is your weapon. And that's where the occult series comes in. First, they are easy to get as they drop from the new UQ, Festive Song of the Wing Ones. Second, they are 14 star weapons and a plus 35 version has a base attack of over 2000, depending on which weapon type you're using. Third, they are extremely cheap and I'm talking about on average less than a million Masetta each. Previously, most of us bought the Revulsal series for our alt characters as it cost around 1 to 2 million Masetta each and are grinded at plus 3. They are also easily obtainable from the collection folder. These at plus 35 grinded are around 1500 attack and at plus 35 occult series they run around 2100 attack depending on the weapon type and that's a 600 attack boost from the Revulsal to occult series or in other words a 40% attack increase. Now some of you might think well Revolsos are plus 30 and the base of cold series is the same price or less than a plus 30 Revolso, but there's now an easier and cheaper way to grind your weapons. And that's through many EXP weapons. These are acquired from the Photon Boost Exchange Shop, 10 Photon Boosts for one of those, or through the X Cube Exchanger, 5 X Cubes for one of those. The mini EXP weapons give 402 EXP each which is equivalent to 2 Sigma series same type weapon but a little cheaper because you only pay fees for one weapon when grinded compared to 2 weapons with the Sigma series. If you were going to buy these, use photon boosters instead of X cubes. X cubes are more valuable than photon boosters and most of us have thousands more photon boosters than X cubes. In the future, X cubes are acquired for endgame weapons such as the Trailblazer series. It requires 400 X cubes to unlock it. They are also used for 40% augment aid boosters and if you ever augmented a good unit or weapon, you know how much you run through these easily. I have over 10,000 photon boosters and for me they have no use until they are tradable for ultimate boosters. But you don't need as many ultimate boosters as you do X cubes. So use your photon boosters instead of your X cubes. I don't go out and buy the maximum amount or you might overbuy them. Here is a mini EXP weapon requirements from grind cap 1 to grind cap 35. From 1 to 10 you need 6, from 10 to 16 you need 5, from 16 to 20 you need 4, from 20 to 25 you need 5, 25 to 29 is 5, 29 to 30, 1, 30 to 34 is 5, and 34 to 35 is 1, for a total of 32 mini EXP weapons. 32 mini EXP weapons equals 320 photon boosters or 160 X cubes. You could go out and buy Sigma same name series and grind them into your occult series if you want to. That's much more of a hassle and more expensive to do so than the nearly useless photon boosters. So count up how many alt characters you have and multiply that by 32 and you know how many mini EXP weapons to buy. So you might ask yourself which weapon type is the best for my alt character. And the answer to that is a cold rugeo or the launcher type. That is because most of our alt characters are either used for gathering or getting silver and gold key farming or augment transfer pass farming. 
In whichever way you use your alt characters, Launcher is effective in each one of those ways. So when you're gathering, enemies do little to no damage and for the most part are just annoying. But one AoE basic shot can kill multiple enemies, and killing multiple enemies means less time killing them. I understand it's only a few second difference, but if you have 12 to 20 characters, those seconds add up to minutes, and we want to maximize our efficiency. For silver and gold Tokyo key farming, the longest part is finishing an arc's quest. The fastest and easiest one is Suppress Zudan, or the first one. Each one takes about a minute or two, however, with the launcher, the time gets cut down because it's an AoE damage dealer and most of the time, it takes 1-2 to two shots to kill the Zudans. Yes, it's only a few seconds difference, but those seconds add up with multiple characters. If you didn't know, silver and gold Tokyo keys are the fastest way to max level. On top of that, they are key in making 50 million masetta per day by equipping skill rings and leveling them up and selling them on the player market. If you want to learn more about silver and gold Tokyo keys or making 15 million masetta per day, those videos are listed in the description down below. Lastly, farming augment transfer passes. They are absolute endgame materials as they allow you to transfer all augments from one weapon to another or one unit to another. Then you can freely upslot during this process by adding capsules onto it. To get these augment transfer passes, you need 20 class X cubes per group, and it's as follows. To get class X cubes, you need to reach max level, then level up again, and you will receive class X cubes. And that's where silver and gold Tokyo keys come in handy. Since the gold ones give over 5 million EXP each at level 80 and above, and take around 2-3 to three minutes each, you can get your class X cubes easily and quickly. This is where the occult launcher comes in handy. In most cases, you can just jump up near the beginning of the map and shoot everything down with ease. And yes, since it's an AoE attack, it will kill multiple targets within one shot, so your time is reduced exponentially per gold or silver key. So with 12 or 20 characters, you want to reduce the amount of time spent on each one of those characters, and the Occult Rugnia is key to achieving that. And that's why you need the Occult series and why they are the best weapon in the game for all characters. Remember when buying a cold series weapon, aim for a weapon with light element attached to it. However, keep in mind that some occult series already have light attached to it on its potential, so you can buy a cheaper element if you choose so. Here is a list of weapon types and the elements attached on their potential. And that's it for this video. If you liked this video and it helped you out, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you all for tuning in and listening, and until next time. Thank you.